Do you remember our video about Siemens SBCs or IoT 2040 and IoT 2050? Well, in this video, we are going to dive deeper into these two devices and we'll show you a very cool feature which you can use in your industrial Internet of Things projects. So don't miss out this video. Welcome back to the Block IoT. As we discussed in our other video about IoT 2050 and IoT 2040 devices, these low-cost devices are a very good option if you need a gateway or let's say an industrial Raspberry Pi for your IoT project. In this video, we are going to talk about a very neat feature about these devices which lets you use Arduino Uno modules or shield on your IoT 2050 and IoT 2040 to interface with the real world. To show you how this feature works, I'm going to use an Arduino Uno Relay Shield, as you can see here, in my IoT 2050, and we are going to use Node-RED to control our relays from Node-RED dashboard on our IoT 2050. In my opinion, this is a very important feature in any IoT or IoT devices or hardware that vendors and manufacturers should consider. Integration and hardware compatibility is a very important aspect in any industrial Internet of Things project. So if you are in process of designing a new hardware for the market, this might be a good example to consider in your hardware design. So without further ado, let's jump into the details. We already went through all the details of the Siemens IoT 2040 and IoT 2050 devices. So if you need more information about these two devices, please watch our other video. Just to summarize, as we discussed, IoT 2040 and IoT 2050 are SPCs or single board computers which can be used in industrial environments. As you may already know, SPCs like Raspberry Pi are not designed for industrial environments and they are not reliable. They are mainly used for prototyping and maybe for using in your home lab. So you can really use a Raspberry Pi in a control cabinet. Of course you can, but most likely you end up regretting that. So there are several factors that make these two devices or perhaps other similar devices a good fit for industrial application. First of all, if you consider the overall cost of a Raspberry Pi, especially these days, they are not really that much cheaper than a device like IoT 2050. When you get a Raspberry Pi, you should get a case, you should get a power supply, you should make sure your case had a good ventilation or it has an active fan for cooling purposes. Also your case should be able to be mounted on a DIN rail in your control cabinet. So one of the first problem is it's not really easy to find 5 volt DC in a control cabinet. Of course if you have an AC outlet in your control cabinet you can just use a normal USB-C or micro USB power supply to power up your Raspberry Pi but there has been many cases that power supply of the Raspberry Pi is failed because they are not really meant for running 24-7 which is a requirement in the industrial environment. So the good thing about these industrial SPCs they run on 24 volt DC which you can connect them to your existing PLC or HMI power supply and also they can easily be mounted on the DIN rail. And the most important factor about these industrial SPCs is the fact that they have been designed and tested for industrial environment. So you can have a peace of mind if you use one of these devices, your device most likely will not fail very soon. So let's get back to the today's topic. Today we are going to show you how you can use an Arduino Uno shield on an IoT 2040 or an IoT 2050 devices. So as you may already know, Arduino is an open hardware and software and it's been widely used in DIY community and IoT projects. Arduino shields have a standard pinout so you can use them on any Arduino Uno compatible devices. So luckily our Siemens IoT 2040 and 2050 devices are compatible with these modules or shields. Using these shields is very easy in IoT 2040 and 50. Let me show you how you can use them. So let's start with IoT 2040 and then we'll move to the IoT 2050. To attach the Arduino shield to your IoT 2040, you just need a terminal screwdriver and you can just open the lid from the right side. And we already done this before because you need to open this to access the SD card of your IoT 2040 device. And then once you open the first one, you can gently pop the other side up 
And as you can see here, we have two rows of PCB headers, which are compatible with Arduino Uno Shield. So this way you can just connect your Arduino Uno Shields to your IT2040 and just be very careful to don't mix up the pins because that happened to me before otherwise your module will not work. Okay, as you can see, my Arduino Uno Relay Shield is now connected to my IoT2040 device and I can use this Relay's output as a digital output in any programming language or a low-code software such as Node-RED. The software side for IoT2040 and IoT2050 is exactly the same and we'll get to it shortly. So now let's see how we can attach this shield to an IoT2050 device. To attach your Arduino Uno shield to your IoT2050 device, you need to find these two holes on your IoT2040 device and use a terminal screwdriver and just gently pop this up. And as you can see, we have two rows of PCB headers similar to IoT2040 and we can connect our Arduino Uno relay board to our IoT2050 device. Again, be very careful when you are connecting the module to the PCB because if you miss one of the pins, your module or shield will not work. Okay, now my relay shield is connected to my IoT2050. And now I can use these four relays to perhaps turn on or off a fan that I have prepared here as an example. So the relay's output have three terminal pins. The middle pin is the COM terminal and on the left side we have the normally open so we are going to use these two terminals so i'm just going to use these wires and i'm just using a power supply and i will use the relay output to switch the fan on and off this is just a low voltage fan but for sure you could use the same approach to turn on and off bigger loads okay i'm just connecting the relay to my power supply and on the other side it will go to my fan Okay, now the hardware is all ready and wired up. Again, just to recap, I've connected my power supply to the IoT2050 and also my IoT2050 device is connected to the network. So let's get into the software details and let's use the Node-RED software to control these relays. Okay, now our hardware is ready and our IoT2050 is powered up and connected to our network. So we can access Node-RED by entering the IP address of our IoT2050 and the port number 1880 on any web browser. So let's get it started. Okay, so my IoT2050 IP address is 192.168.0.250 and to access the Node-RED, I'm just entering the port number 1880. The process is very simple, Node-RED is already installed on your IoT2050 and you don't really need to install it again. Once you have access to the Node-RED, I hope you are familiar with Node-RED because that's out of the scope of this video. Maybe we will create more video about Node-RED in future videos, but there are plenty of videos on YouTube. So to get started with Node-RED, let's check any other video. So right now we have our hardware ready and the Node-RED is up and running and some custom nodes are already installed installed on your Node-RED running on your IoT2050 and to use the digital outputs or perhaps the digital inputs you just need to go to your nodes and just keep scrolling down until you see this palette which is IoT2050 GPIO. In this example we are just going to use digital outputs because we are using Arduino Uno Relay Shields. If you have another type of shield, for example digital input shields or perhaps motor control using PWM signals, you can use other nodes. Okay, let's just add four digital outputs to our Node-RED flow and let's test the module. So I'm just going to drag and drop these nodes over here. Number one. two, three, and four. 
This Arduino Uno relay sheet that I am using is using digital output number 4, 5, 6, and 7. You might have a different shield, so just refer to the data sheet of your shield and then you can apply the proper setting to your flow. So for me, I'm just going to start from the first node and I'm going to select the pin number D4. Let's just give it a name uh, D4, save it. And let's just repeat the process for the other three output pins as well. Just as a quick test, let's just trigger these digital output pins with an inject node in row dread. So I will just drag and drop four different inject nodes into my flow. So make sure you change the payload to be a boolean. So these inject nodes will inject the value of one or true to our digital output. So we will need another set of four inject nodes to set the zero or false to our output as well. So we can just simply copy and paste these nodes and perhaps let's just connect it like this and we have to change the payloads to be false. All right, now we have all the nodes that we need. Let's just do the quick wiring or connection to our output. And I'm just going to connect these two together. All right, now we have all the nodes ready and we can deploy our flow. Okay, as you can see on the message here, our flow is successfully deployed and we can test our system. So my Arduino shield has four LED indicators that shows the status of each relay. As you can see here right now, they are all turned off. Let's just trigger one of the output and make sure our program and hardware is working properly. So I'm just going to trigger digital output number seven. And as you can see here, my LED is turned on and my fan also has started to work. So let's just turn it off. I'm just going to inject the false to this digital output. And as you can see, the status of LED went off. Let's just do that same test for other three digital output as well. So D4, again, pay attention to the LEDs over here. Let's turn it off. My D5. D6 and again let's turn on the fan And just to make our project cooler, let's just add a quick dashboard to our Node-RED program. I haven't updated my Node-RED to the latest version, so I'm just using the traditional dashboard. As you may know, dashboard 2.0 is now available for Node-RED from FlowFuse, but the process is exactly the same. So just for the demonstration, let's just add four buttons or switches and turn on and off our digital outputs. So I'm just going to use a switch for each of the outputs. Uh, maybe I just move my nodes a little bit to make more space. So for the switch, it's pretty simple. You don't really need to do any setting of the on payload should be true and the off payload should be false. And we are just going to copy and paste this switch for all four digital outputs. And let's just do the wiring or connections. And as you may already know, to edit your dashboard, you just need to go to the dashboard section. Because I already did some tests, that's why I already have these dashboards over here. But let's just get it started from scratch. So to start from scratch, let's just go back to our switch nodes and let's just double click. The dashboard consists of different groups, so you have to create a group. Because I deleted my groups, that's why here I have an error. And I'm just going to add a new UI group. And perhaps I just give it a name, IoT 2050 DOs, and I'm just going to save it. And let's just use the same group for other digital output as well. Okay, this is how simple it is to create a dashboard in Node-RED. So don't forget to deploy your flow again, and our flow is successfully deployed. And just to open your dashboard, just click on this icon over here, 
I have four switches over here, which I can control the status of my digital outputs from the dashboard. So let's just turn on and off the output from the dashboard. Again, as you can see, the status of the relays can be seen on these LEDs over here. So let's just turn them on and off. Now let's just turn on the fan. And let's turn off the fan. Okay, and as you may already know, you can access your dashboard from your smartphone or your tablet as well. So let's just turn on and off the fan from my phone. As you can see, it's super fast. All right, there you have it. Now you know how to use Arduino Uno Shields on your IoT 2050 or IoT 2040 devices to connect your programs to the physical boards, turn on and off fans, motors, lights, and many other applications. Again, I only had a relay shield over here, but you could just use another type of Arduino Uno Shields. But please bear in mind, not all of the shields are supported and make sure the proper node is available in your node thread on your IoT 2050 if you are planning to use it in any upcoming project. I hope this video was useful. Let me know what you think about this project and what other ideas you can implement using this feature. And until the next time, have a great day or night.